we have every first move against one E4. That's by Tess, as Bobby Fischer says, tiered and ranked. Here it is. Okay. So we start with E4. Everything's all cool. You waiting to see your E5, your Sicilian, you know what I mean? Even the Carol Khan. And then they come out with this move right here, B5. It's going to be a long day at the office. This is actually called the hang upon for no reason opening. In fact, after B5, this is a very, very terrible move. All we do is take the pawn and we're done. Basically develop your pieces, take the whole center. B5 is not a move. Let's move to the next one. Coming in at number 19, here's the next one. After E4, they go F5. Are you kidding me? First off, Fingo tripping. Of course, you do not push the F pawn. Don't play F6 or F3, as Fingo says. Secondly, you just open up the king with a lot of problems. After pawn takes F5, which you should always take this pawn, you're already threatening queen H5. Check. And after G6, pawn takes G6 is next. This is called the Doris Gambit or the Doris opening. Very, very bad here. E4, F5. You just take that. Let's move to the next one. Coming in at number 18, we have the Barnes opening. What is that? Well, let's check it out. After E4, the move is F6, just as bad as F5. Okay, maybe not as terrible, but it's still pretty terrible. Again, fine gold doesn't like you pushing those F pawns, so don't do it. Secondly, right, it isn't as terrible as you think it is, but it is pretty bad nevertheless. The king is just opened up. For no reason here, the knight wanted to go to f6, now the pawn's there. But what we do is right here, we're just going to develop d4, knight to f3, knight to c3. You can even grab lots of space if you like with the four pawns type of attack that you'll see in many different openings. d4, f4, c4, put the knights behind the pawns. Really clear and easy development here, but you can't punish this move right now, immediately. f6 is very bad though, the knight cannot go to f6 and there's going to be lots of problems. This one's called the Barnes opening, don't try this one at home. Now let's move to the next one. And here we are with the next one after move one, E4. They go A5. What are you doing with your life? This one is called the wear defense. So be very aware of how bad this opening is. After A5, of course, this is just rough. They A lot of times, believe it or not, they're going to play Rook A6 next. And you just take it. What are you doing, right? This is a very, very bad move. All we do again is center, right? Of course, they say a uh, move on the flank should be countered with, with a move in the center, right? So any play on the wing should be countered with a play in the center. So D4 is good, C4, F4. And once again, they're not taking a center, so you should. Maybe Knight to F3, Knight C3, uh, Bishop to C4, and etc. We just draw many arrows here just to show your plans and ideas. But again, this is a bad move. It doesn't do anything for the center at all. And looking to develop the move, uh, the rook, in a very, very bad fashion after bishop takes a6. This is called the wear defense. Be very aware and stay away from this one. Let's move to the next. Here we go with the next one. After move one, e4, they go h5. What are you doing with your life? Once again, this one is called the goldsmith opening. Something crazy. What the heck is that? Oh, goldsmith? Who is goldsmith? The goldsmith defense. And this one is just as bad, but of course, at least... You know, with the pawn not on d4, then they can play rook h6 and try to do the weird rook lift. And you will see this weird stuff, but it's just going to be a clumsy rook and very vulnerable to attack and being trapped and etc. h5 is a very bad move. What do we do with play on the wing? Should be countered with, pause the video if you remember that. Play in the center. What do you do? d4, knight to c3, you can go c4, f4. All the same moves we pointed out before because they did nothing in the center. This is why h5 is not the best move. Okay, we got e4, h5. This is another one. Let's move to the next. Next up against 1e4, we have e4, h6. Well, this one is called the car defense. In fact, the C-A-R-R. -R. And it seems like that they don't car about anything in life after this move, A6. Well, this is ridiculous, right? Play on the wing should be countered with, we've said this many times before, play in the center. Absolutely. So playing something like D4. H6 could be a nice inclusion later on. A lot of times you may see this in openings that you actually play um, all the time, like deep openings and uh, all the deep theory. H6 is could be a, a, a nice prophylactic move or a useful move later on. But right now in the beginning, it doesn't do much for the center. So we can, again, take the whole thing with the D4, maybe C4, 2, F4, or Knight F3, Knight C3, however you want to do it. Very nice ways to play this, but H6 is not one of them. Let's move to the next. Next up, we have against 1E4, we have Knight H6. Very strange. Now, of course, it develops a piece. 
but it's still at night on the edge of board. They say night on the rim is dim or grim or however you want to spell it or rhyme it. The night on the edge of the board is not the best place as it cuts off many squares. This one's actually called the hippopotamus, which is actually different because, of course, a lot of times you'll see with a regular hippo with black or white, you put the bishops or you think of the bishops on G7 and B7. You put all the pawns on like the six rank, like E6, D6, B6, G6, H6, A6, right? Everything on like six rank. Most of them, except the uh, the F and C pawns, usually. Um, and then you're just going to have to, you know, springboard your position later on. Knights go to D7 and E7. But here on Knight H6, it's a little bit strange here. Definitely not the move that you should be playing. The Knight's already restricted. You can't even go anywhere. And you might have to play something like F6, Knight F7 here. Very strange, very playable, but very strange at the same time. I'll take white all day here. All we do is, again, develop the pieces. You see a pattern here. Everything that we've seen so far is kind of like the same when it comes to our you know, objective is to make sure we take over the center and develop our pieces and etc. This is the hippopotamus. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have after e4, knight a6. Ooh, looks just like the hippo, but it's the other side of the board. This one's called the lemming defense or the lemon line because of how sour this one going to be for the black pieces. Okay, same plan. What's the plan? Pause the video if you need to, but you should know that by now, right? Play on the wing should be countered by, sounds like a broken record at this point, right? is uh, playing the center. Do the same stuff. They're not taking a center, so we're going to take it. What is knight a6? It's a really bad move is what it is. Knight on the rim is dim, as we mentioned before. Okay, here we go. That one's done. Now let's move to the next. Next up against 1e4, one, e one of these crazy tries, right? You're going to see this in your games today, is g5. What is this? Well, this one's called the board. Who came up with that one? Well, actually, it's in reverse. If you're learning something today, what do you mean in reverse? Well, if you go G4, move one, right? So if we back up here and we go G4, this is actually called the grab opening. But if you go E4, G5, it's in reverse. So it's called the Borg opening. This is ridiculous, okay? This is not a good opening at all. What do you do, right? At this point, you should actually know what we're going to do with our pieces based off of the other openings we've already seen. After G5 here, what do you think you would do here? Pause the video if you need some time. But of course, we take the center, something like D4 once again. Let's make the move on the board. Bishop takes G5 is now available. We also have C3. We can play C4 next. Now, F4, probably not the greatest in this situation. And Knight F3 can run into G4. But we can attack this pawn already. We can even set up a center this way. Put the bishops on D3 and uh, E3. Maybe the knight's here too as well. Nevertheless, we have a great position. G5 is really, really bad out of the opening. Now, let's move to the next one. Okay, here we are with the next reply after e4, 1e4, 1a6, another flank move. What is this? Now, actually, believe it or not, this one was actually played by Anthony Tony Miles, and he beat Karpov, believe it or not, right? So this is playable, but it is one of those, don't try this at home, guys. Just, I mean, you can try it, and if you lose 10 games out of 11, that's okay. It's most likely... A lot of it has to do with this move right here in the beginning. Of course, maybe you need to take some central squares once again. So our plan stays the same, right? Is what? D4, knight f3, maybe f4. You can even, I mean, go for a finchetto route if you like. But of course, just principal chess, d4, knight f3, c4, maybe even f4. Once again, develop your pieces and take the whole center and put the pieces around it. Because black failed to take any type of center here, making a wing move, which is countered by a center move. In the beginning of the game, e4, a6, right? This one's actually called the St. George defense, right? St. George it is. And Tony Miles used it to be Karpov. This one's a cool one. Of course, playable. Sometimes very rare, but uh, not the greatest move. And again, don't try this one at your house. Okay, here it is. Now let's move to the next one. Okay, here we are with our next reply to 1e4. It's b6. Now this one actually isn't as bad as the other options here, right? So this one's actually called the Owens defense. And the, the goal here is actually put the bishop on b7, play something like e6. So you have a French type of structure with the pawn on e6 and a pawn on b6. You actually use your bishops. In fact, this is like a reverse b3 Larson system. That is b3 move one, right? It's, a, it's actually just in reverse. We play b3, bishop to b2. Lots of times play e3 and bishop b5 and try to pin the knight and actually use a lot of, uh, use the pieces to play in the center, pieces and pawns, in fact. So after move one, e4, b6, black's going to do the same thing at some point, right, with uh with playing e6, maybe try to pin our knight if we play knight to c3, play c5 and put the bishop on b7. This was the Owens defense, not played as much, and of course, it is a nice try. Um, so just to throw people off, uh, theory-wise, and off of things that they're used to, white, that is, of course, by playing one, b6, and bishop b7, white usually doesn't 
play against this setup too much. And it is a very stable setup and you can play it. And it looks like a French defense in many ways with E6. So it is something you can try at home, but it is slightly passive because it does nothing in the center. So you need to definitely pay attention to this. If you're playing it from the black side, you need to pay attention and make sure that you are doing central moves very quickly. C5, D6, E6, uh, Knight F6, et cetera, Knight to C6 or D7 in many cases too as well, Knight F6, moving the bishop out. But white is going to do many things very easily. Same thing, right? Especially if you don't take the center, then we're going to play moves like D4, right? Immediately take this whole center ourselves. Bishop to D3 is a move. F4, there's lots of place, ways you can play this as well. This one's the Owens defense, unknown just a little bit more, and we'll move to the next one right now. Next up in response to 1e4, we have knight to c6. Unorthodox. Very unorthodox. This one is called the Nimzowicz uh, defense, in fact, by Aaron Nimzowicz. So this one actually is very, very strange, right? Now, you also can transpose into many different openings after knight f3. You can play e5 immediately, which transpose into an e4, e5 opening. We just don't know which one yet. You can go bishop c4. Of course, Italian game. You can also go uh, Roy Lopez as well. Um, so it's very important to understand transpositions. But after knight c6, even after the d4 move, there's a d5. And you do want to know what you're doing. Pawn takes leads to some trouble with the d4 pawn. e5 leads to bishop f5. And the bishop does go out, uh, come out very quickly. And sometimes you can see a knight b4 that you'll see in reverse of Joe Baba London um, and many London type structures. So it's definitely difficult. And also black has two pieces out. We don't have any out yet, but we do have the, the center here. So very interesting opening, something to pay attention to, honestly, from both colors, something that you should know. This is called the Nimzowicz the, the defense, something a little bit different and an unorthodox. And a lot of times unorthodox can throw your opponent off from the black side. But from white here, white standpoint, you just develop your pieces. Once again, you should know a little bit of theory and just obviously develop your pieces. Very easy, fundamental chess, right? E5 after knight of three, we play d4, we play knight to c3. You can play bishop d3, bishop b5 or castling once again. Very nice stuff. Get your pieces out. Play great chess. And now we'll move to the next. Next up in response to 1e4, we have knight f6. That one's played quite often, believe it or not. This one's actually called in the American way, the Alakine. But of course, the Eliakin is, uh, is how you uh, would say it or pronounce it. Probably still saying that wrong. But it is, of course, from um, Alexander Aliakin, right? So knight f6, this is actually a very, very interesting opening. It's very provocative to say the, the least here because we're gonna push on the knight most times here. If you don't, then they can play moves like d5 and other things. But e5 attacks the knight, knight f6, and after knight to d5, you can actually play something like c4 or d4. Or, uh, you know, c4, d4, f4 for a pawn attack. You can go knight f3. You can go bishop c4. Very flexible way of doing this. This is not uh, recommended to try at home. Now, Bobby Fischer did actually win only one world championship game with this. And there's a reason why there's only one game in the world championship with this opening from the black side here. Because uh, you got to be careful, right? It's very provocative. You get lots of space. I mean, even just looking at how scary this could be from the black side after a move like even c4 first, knight b6, and then d4, and then d6. You can go f4 too as well. Like, look at all these pawns. Like, what is going, hey, man, relax. Well, I'm not, you played knight f6 move one. You gave me all these tempi, and you're able, you know, I'm able to take the center, so I'm going to take the center. This one is the Aliakin or the Alakine. Of course, something to pay attention to. Always push on the knight. Always push on the knight when you face this again. Let's move to the next one. Here we go with our next response to 1e4. And this one, you got to be careful with. This one's called the Scandinavian d5. Oh, my goodness. Now all the Scandi people in the YouTube, all the Scandi world, the team Scandies, the John Bartholomew. Oh, man. Here we go. Okay, look. First off, you can try this at home, but I mean, if you get hurt, right, you know, touch the stove if it's hot, right, you know, you know, it's going to burn, it's going to hurt, right? <laughs> That's what you have here with the Scandinavian. Now, it's very playable. It is played. It actually was played many times by even strong uh, world champions. After he takes d5, queen takes d5. Now, you also have the knight of six versions as well, which are more calm, but queen takes d5 is the usual stuff, and you just get an all-out attack. This is not the greatest opening from the black side here, but of course you do get lots of tempi, and it is, again, provocative, just like you would see in the alicant, right? So, uh, okay, knight to c3, hits the queen, queen can go to d8 or a5, right? Usually you follow up with a d4, let's just go down a, a rabbit hole here, d4, knight of six, knight of three, c6, right? And bishop to c4, bishop d3, bishop e2 is a move, bishop d2 is a move, all these are moves, you play knight e5, then you actually just get lots of space, and you actually have a very good spatial advantage here. You're also trying to attack black many times for and trying to punish them for bringing the queen out very early. It's very playable for both sides, the Scandinavian provocative opening and white can get lots of attacking fun chances. So not anything to be afraid of from the white side at all, right? This is a Scandinavian. Definitely pay attention to this one and have this one on your radar. Let's move to the next one. 
Here we go with our next reply to 1E4. It is G6, the modern defense. Now, this one is modern. You can actually play it today. It is not refuted. It is something that you can play from the black side. Now, you do give up the center a lot, and there's lots of ways that white can attack black. Now, you have to understand when you do give up the center with wing pawn moves like this, you, you have to understand that you will come under some fire. You will have less space sometimes. You have to play dynamic. Because you gave up so much space, you have to make moves very quickly, meaning uh, do things very quickly. C5 and pawn breaks, E6, D5. Look for tactics and imbalances, dynamicism. And there's a reason why Hikaru Nakamura actually used this many times with great success. It doesn't matter what he plays, obviously. But, of course, the modern was one thing that he used many, many times in Title Tuesday. If you ask him, in fact, on his stream, he says that he likes the imbalances that it gives. So it always is like fighting. Yes, I'm giving up something, space. And, you know, an attack for white in many, in many cases. But I have some imbalances. And if you make that mistake, which is most point, you know, Hikaru is going to clamp on that and figure that out. You're going to lose. You're going to have some problems here um, from the white side. Now, the modern is definitely a modern way to play. It is very playable. But that doesn't mean you're going to get the same results as Hikaru. But you can play the opening that he has played. E6, G6, D4, Bishop G7 many times. Knight F3, you go D6, A6, stuff like that. C4 and IC3. You can go Bishop E3, you can go H3. I mean, there's many ways that you can play this. But this one's called the Modern Defense. And in modern day and times, it's still playable from both sides. I would personally choose white, but definitely a playable move. This one's the Modern Defense. Let's move to the next. Next up on our list, we have the Perk Defense. Of course, right? They're like, Perk out. Oh, he said Perk. It, okay, American Perk, right? But P-I-R-C is actually pronounced Pierce, P-E-R-T-S, right? Or Z, um, but it's pronounced the Pierce, actually, which is D6, E4, D6, right? Perk, Pierce, same thing, E4, D6. This is a very solid move. It can actually run into the Philidor or many other openings, believe it or not, sometimes even King's Indians, right? It just depends on what's going on, but definitely a very flexible move. And after you play a move like D4, they go Knight F6, and then Knight C3, and you kind of have what they call like the King's Indian, for e4 against e4 right now of course they didn't go c4 here so it's not king's indian like but it's kind of king's indian like so if you do like a king's indian defense it is something to pay attention to from the black side and maybe you can actually add it to your repertoire white of course is going to play moves like bishop to e3 maybe play queen d2 f3 and try to go for a a king side onslaught and try to mate on this side of the board as you would see in the yugoslav variation of the dragon sicilian right so you can see this a lot and it does resemble sort of a dragon type sicilian but c5 has not been played now c5 can be played and this can actually transpose into a um a, a dragon sicilian in many ways but of course it is based off the move order this one's the perk or the pierce defense very cool of course very fun opening now let's move to our next all right here we go with our next move in response to 1e4 this one is the french defense okay for all you French fans out there, I actually grew up on this opening. Got over like 1,800 OTB with this. It moved to E5 and then C5. But E6, French, is very solid. The bad thing about the French is that this light square bishop gets locked in many times. And this is the only real problem in the French. After D4, D5, you can have many ways to go. Knight C3 is more aggressive. E5 grabs a lot of space. F3 is definitely not a move, but has played before. Bishop D3, more of a selector variation knight to d2 to ras uh, type variations as well e5 is more standard too so it's just a advanced variation played a lot but if you notice how this bishop is locked inside the pawn chain when whites are free range to do whatever they want lots of times the bishop goes to d3 and if there's a castle there's almost some big big sacking possibilities on h7 you have to be very very careful here from the black side because of the setup of the passive bishop the pawn chain right always pawn structures or pawn structures are like the skeleton of the position and it tells you what you should be doing so of course the the in the way that the pawn structure points is in the direction that you should be playing in so lots of times as you see here even with the pawn on c3 c5 c3 right black's going to play more on the queen side etc stuff like this a6 and white is going to play more on the king side knight f3 bishop d3 castling sometimes even sacrificing on h7 if you castle early because the bishop is not able to come to f5 you put a knight on g5 you play queen h5 and there's mates many possible mates here and many times right so this was a french defense very solid opening in fact played uh, from the likes of really lots of strong players lots of gms and it's definitely playable in today's time so this is the french defense and now let's move to our next here we go with our next reply the last few here is e4 and c6 now this one 
is what they call the Carol Khan, right? Very strong, very solid opening. Lots of players use this one. There's lots of flexibility and dynamicism if people want to actually mix up the game and fight for more. The better part, this is kind of a cousin of the French, right? After D4, and we see the reason why it's a cousin here is in the French, after E6, the bishop's locked in. But this is why we go C6 to lock the bishop outside of the pawn chain and not inside, right? Or even playing knight of three here and not allowing the bishop to be locked in on c8 like you would see in the French defense. This one's different, very solid, dynamic, and lots of players play this one from beginner all the way to super GM. This is definitely a very solid opening, very strong, and from both sides, there's always play in the Carol Khan. Recommended you study from both sides so you can learn lots of things about it. This one's the Carol Khan. Let's move to the next one. Here we are with our next one. Can you guess what it is? Can you guess what it is? What do you think it is? Pause the video. What, which one do you think this one is? It is E5, symmetrical, right? Symmetrical. Very, very easy to play. You see this all the time, right? After white plays E4, black says, I'm going to play E5 and do the same thing as you. Yes, I'm a tempo down, and I have to respond to things that you do. For instance, knight of three, we have to respond to knight takes C5. So knight C6, but I developed two as well, and I'm saying I have my fair share in the center as well. Very strong, can play all the way up to the classics, all the way up through the history of chess, this move has been played, one of the strongest moves, right behind the number one one that we're going to look at in a few here. But at E5 is definitely very strong. You can go many ways from here. D6, obviously, you can go Philidors. I mean, it's so many options. Petrov after Knight of 6, Knight of, or the Russian, Knight of 3, Knight of 6. So many things that you can do here, guys. So very, very strong. It's good to understand what you have. And it's a very good move. And it's not being refuted anytime soon in the history of chess. Okay, that's E4, E5. Now let's move to our final move against 1E4. Okay, guys, last response to 1E4. Can you guess it? Can you guess it? 100 ELO to anybody that can guess this move right here. Okay, ELO is sold separately. But after E4, the move is C5. The Sicilian, the most combative response to E4. Now, I like to play this from both sides. Many players do. E4, you know, aggressive. E4 best by test. Lots of open lines and diagonals. And C5, right? Very combative. Black says, yeah, I have my own plans. I know you want to do your thing and play aggressive and play E4. I'm going to do my thing as well. Most combative response is C5. The Sicilian is so many different Sicilians, so theoretical, so many, so much this, so much that. It's very fun, fun, fun chess. And you're going to see a lot of that. <laughs> Hopefully you're on the fun side of the fun chess here, but this is the Sicilian defense. You have so many of them, right? Knight of three can be a move. A favorite of mine is the C3 Sicil for the kill or the C3 Sicilian playing C3. You can play Smith Mora, D4. You can play F4, Strain Sicil. You can play G3, Knight F3. And on the contrary, of course, maybe even open Sicilian here, you can play D6, more Knight Orc or classical Sicilian. You have Knight to C6. We can play even Accelerated Dragons or Rosalimos. You can play G6 here, Accelerated Dragons. You can play E6, Time and Up. There's so many Sicilians. It's like 20, 30. They even make up Sicilians now in this day and time, right? The Sicilian defense is one of the most studied openings, of course, besides E5 too as well, but one of the most fun and combative ones. Hopefully, you're feeling combative and you study some of that from both sides today or tomorrow or in your chess career. Hopefully it works for you. But these were the responses to 1E4. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, then check the videos right after this one. And we'll see you on the next one.